What we need in this country is more hope. The, the, the people have lost their faith in our institutions. The, 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 their faith is at an all-time low. And, and one of the reasons they've lost it is because the Congress, over the years, has not delivered for the American people well enough. We're in the majority right now. We've gone through a little bit of suffering. We've gone through a little bit of character building. And you know what it's produced? More strength, more perseverance, and a lot of hope. And that's what we're about to deliver to the American people. We are going to speak, we're going to speak with clarity and conviction and consistency to the American people. We're going to tell them what we're for, what agenda we are pursuing, and why it is best for every American. Why it will give them more liberty, opportunity, and security. We're going to speak to that clearly. We're going to act consistently. We're going to exhibit two things here, trust and teamwork. And this group will deliver for the American people. I said it in the chamber, and I will say it here. We're going to govern well. And I think the people are going to be very pleased with those results. We're so grateful. I'm so grateful and so humbled to have gotten a unanimous vote on the floor by all of my colleagues here. Um, we, we went through a lot to get here, uh, but, but we are ready to govern. And that will begin right away. You've all heard me talk a lot today. I'm not going to belabor the point because the sun is bright and it's too warm for the fall. But I'll say this. We're going to dispense with all the usual ceremonies and celebrations that traditionally follow a new speakership because we have no time for either one. The American people's business is too urgent in this moment. The hour is late. The crisis is great. In America, we hear you. And we are reporting again, as I said in there, to our duty station. That will begin in just a few moments. This entire group is going to go back to the House floor, and we are going to pass our resolution in support of the nation of Israel, our closest ally. You're going to see an aggressive schedule in the days and weeks ahead. You're going to see Congress working as hard as it's ever worked, and we are going to deliver for the American people. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I want to thank you for being patient with us, and I promise you it will be worth it. God bless you. God bless you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we take some questions. The yeas are 412, the nays are 10, six recorded as present, two thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended, the resolution is agreed to, and with that objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? This resolution condemns Hamas and Iran for its support of terrorist groups, such as Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, while also calling for all sanctions on Iran to be fully enforced. So I urge my colleagues to support this important resolution. It will send a clear message across the world that terrorists and their sponsors will be held to account for their atrocities, their crimes against humanity, their crimes of genocide. On December 7, 1941, in response to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt said it was a date which will live in infamy. So too will October the 7th, 2023. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I urge support and I reserve the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. But if you say Israel does not have the right to exist, you are saying that you do not want peace. So I urge our Arab friends to join the Abraham Accords and acknowledge Israel's right to exist because that's the pathway to peace in the Middle East. And to the people of Israel, I hope you learn of the passage of this resolution today and know that the United States Congress and the American people have your back. The gentleman 
from the great state of Louisiana and the 56th Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Mike Johnson. First, uh, a few words of gratitude. I want to thank uh, Leader Jeffries. Uh, I do look forward to working with you on behalf of the American people. I know we see things from very different points of view, but I know that in your heart you love and care about this country and you want to do what's right. And so we're going to find common ground there, all right? <laughs> the challenge before us is great, but the time for action is now, and I will not let you down. We stand at a very dangerous time. I'm stating the obvious. We all know that. The world is in turmoil. But a strong America is good for the entire world. I don't believe there are any coincidences in a matter like this. I believe that Scripture, the Bible, is <clears throat> very clear that, that God is the one that raises up those in authority. He raised up each of you, all of us. And, and I believe that God has ordained and allowed each one of us to be brought here for this specific moment in this time. This is my belief. In this time of great crisis, it is our duty to work together, as previous generations of great leaders have, to face these great challenges and solve these great problems. I will conclude with this. The job of the Speaker of the House is to serve the whole body, and I will. But I've made a commitment to my colleagues here that this Speaker's office is going to be known for decentralizing the power here. And, yeah. And, and we want our allies around the world to know that this body of lawmakers is reporting again to our duty stations. Let the enemies of freedom around the world hear us loud and clear. The People's House is back in business. Sir, if you wish to assume this awesome responsibility, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same? that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. So help you God. I do, so help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman.